Hi, we're the Kearns from Evansville, Wisconsin. Hi, I'm Sean, and I'm 30 years old. I'm Shannon, and I'm 24. We have a set of twins. Brandon is four, and Bryce is four. Brenna is our daughter. She is two. <gasps> Boys are crazy. They are very hyper kids. Hey. Bryce, come on. They fight a lot. Look at the aggression. Punching the living daylights out of each other. Brenna is turning into a little mimic of the boys. Sean, I need to leave in a half an hour. OK. OK. It's really tough getting on the same page with parenting because we're never here at the same time. Mommy's got to leave for work. We're like totally on two different schedules. Well, these parents do need to communicate. How are they meant to really work together? Sean and I argue all the time because we're always stressed out. It affects a relationship 100%. I actually look forward to working on weekends just because I don't have to stay home and listen to the kids screaming. I'm not leaving. I wish. You guys, stop! What are you doing? Bryce Carnes. There is no discipline in our house whatsoever. You don't really get mad at them. No, I, I don't. I'm pretty He lets everything back. go. He doesn't ever get mad or yell at them. OK. <gasps> he ignores it. Pretty much, yes. The kids running out of the house all day long is a really big concern for me. Brandon? Brandon, do you know you're going to get hit by a car if you keep doing that? <gasps> Please don't do that. This has got to stop. This is about safety here. It's like a circus, and I cannot stand living in it anymore. Super Nanny, we need your help. Well, I better hurry up and get to this family while the kids are still in one piece. Hello. Hi. Hi, pleased to meet you. I'm Shannon. Shannon. Come on in. Hello. I didn't know how to react in front of Joe. I was kind of like, she's judging every move that we make right now. Hello. Nice to meet you. Sean. When I first met the family, they were a little bit dumbstruck that I was in their house, but things were about to change. Whilst lunch was warming up in the oven, the family decided that they were going to go out into the backyard and play. And then the boys decided to jump the neighbor's fence, and she was left having to have two uninvited guests. This lady might not want them over. I mean, she didn't invite them, did she? No, don't push. Dad finally had to remove the boys physically. Come on. So this fence is not enough of a boundary? No, it's not. Just today, they were trying to hit me in the stomach because I was trying to make them leave. Excuse me? And I'm pregnant, yeah. So we got some issues to work on. <laughs> <gasps> Don't kick me. And then back in their own yard, the boys didn't show any more respect for Mum than they did for their neighbor's backyard. Did he just rip you the bird? Yes, he did. Do you want to come help me get out the pizzas and cut them up? It's like this family are oblivious to what their children are doing and saying to them. I've seen dogs train better. And I don't like you. Bryce and Brandon call me the B word on a regular basis. That's like daily. Give me a hug and calm down, OK? It's tolerated by their parents. They don't put any discipline in place to teach their children that this behavior will not be tolerated. The other pizza is in the oven that you like. The pizza did eventually warm up, but the kids didn't sit down to have lunch. The boys got up and started to run outside, which is defiant and dangerous. Brandon? Sean, can you grab her? So you spend your time running around the house? Yeah, pretty much. They go running, and they'll go next door, and we tell them not to, and they'll start running next door. And... So when did it get this bad? Um, it's been like this for a long time. Dad took a turn in chasing Brandon and brought him inside the house, but then he got up, and he tried to get out the house again. OK, get in the house. I'll tell you what, I wish I lived in this house. I'd be five stone lighter. But then I saw exactly how mum and dad deal with this problem. What's that noise? Yeah, locked in the door. We what was that? We locked him in. I've locked Brandon in his bedroom. Sean and I reversed the lock on their bedroom 
door. We have used it just to keep them in the house. It's a desperate means of trying to control your children when you lock them in their bedroom. It's not effective. It certainly isn't going to teach the child how to behave properly. And when he's let out of the room, he's only going to want to run around more. Brandon, when you're ready to come out and not run out the door. OK. OK, why did you do that? He'd spat. He'd chewed up pizza onto his bedroom floor. Did you have it in your mouth, or did you fill that up? I think No, you didn't. I filled it up and... OK. And then Brenna walked in and picked up the piece of pizza and put it in her mouth. She's oh. eating the, she's oh eating the food. Oh, my Yucky. I thought I was going to puke myself, to be honest. That's gross. That's Brennan's oh, chewed-up nice. food. It didn't really phase me, because Brenna will pick up whatever the boys leave behind. It's pretty normal at our house. OK, let's go. Come on. Because there are no boundaries or discipline, and because these children do not take direction or listen to their parents, okay. everything has spiralled out of control. So you have to question, what are these parents thinking? Later on in the day, the kids slipped away from Mum and ran outside the house again. I'm concerned for their safety at this point. Where is everyone? Yeah, I, Sean's out rounding the kids. Sorry? Sean is out rounding up the kids. Why, where are they? They're outside. Where? I didn't see them. Somewhere they went running that way. What do you mean somewhere? What do you mean you don't know where they are? Well, they're probably down three houses down with Sean. He went probably. down. Probably. So you don't know where they are? Well, they're with their dad. I know that, I think. So we went to the neighbors. The kids were out there playing with other children, no adults, and there was no Sean. OK, guys, come home. Where's Sean? I have no idea where Sean's at, so. Sean went back home. And your kids are still here? Yes. <laughs> and where's Brenna? She, he has her. How do you know? Well, you thought that that's the boys. Well, I thought, I oh, thought he chased know. them down here. But hopefully he has Brenna. That's what I'm hoping. Is that another pond over there? I mean, let's face it, there's a massive pond by their house. I mean, it's only going to be a matter of time before a bad situation could happen. Four years old and these kids are out. And where's the parents? We were taking the kids back to the house and then Sean suddenly reappeared. Oh, there you are. Hold on a minute. Where have you been? It's not rocket science, is it? They're your kids. They're your responsibility. You don't just leave them in the garden. I just hope they'll be all right when you get back. Finally, all the kids were back in the house, but the lack of parenting skills between mum and dad is causing an immense strain on their marriage. Well, I just don't want to play games. You know, my I'm kids run outside. Games. I know that. I was but with them. I was I'm the only one that was with them. For you, if I'm outside but looking Shannon, for you, I was the only one that was sitting there watching them play for about 20 minutes. Yes, because I was in here picking up their play doh mesh. But, okay, but I was over okay. there watching them play. Okay, but then and I, I come went back down there because it's getting he... cold okay, out, fine. so I went fine, and got fine, them a fine. coat. After seeing mum and dad argue, I know that once I can get these kids behaving better, I'm going to need to concentrate on mum and dad seeing eye to eye. Not a big deal. Okay. Bye. Mum and Dad got the kids bathed and dressed and ready for bed. But by then, it was 8.30. I mean, most two- and four-year-olds would have been soundly asleep by then. But not these boys. It was showtime. Look what Dad's putting in, guys. Come on, football movie's on. Bedtime at our house is non-existent. The kids just fall asleep wherever and whenever. Mum explained to me that bedtimes are pretty much predictable in this house. We'll let them sit down out here and fall asleep, and then transfer them to their bedroom. And what would you say, around four or five, yeah. three, they get up and come in our bed. So one of us will come out here or in the boys' bed. You're having a laugh. Musical beds. They won't work. No. After a little bit, I did see Mum try to put Brenna to bed. Yeah. Good night, Bina. But she was determined to have none of it. But you're not sitting down out here, Brenna. Brenna, go to bed. Mommy! Get in the bed, and I mean it. 
And in the meantime, the boys couldn't sit still, they were restless and overtired. You want me to put you in your bedroom and lock the door? Because that's where you're going to go. Brandon, do not bite me. That's not even funny. Don't do it. <laughs> and then cheeky Brandon saw an opportunity to add to the mischief. They normally don't even go in her room. But tonight, I don't know why, they just want to go in there and just to harass, just to keep everything, keep going all night long. Come 10 o'clock, finally, all the kids had fallen asleep. We will be having a family meeting where we can talk about a lot of issues that do need to be addressed so we can start to create some equilibrium in this house. OK. All right, so. Sounds good. I am kind of nervous of what she's going to say to me and my wife. I'll see myself out. I'll see okay. tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. See ya. I don't know quite exactly how she took everything in and what she's going to tell us. I don't believe I'm going to be telling them anything they don't know. But how they handle the truth is yet to be seen. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. You obviously know that you've got serious issues mm -hmm. to address. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Let's talk about the kids' behaviour right now, mm -hmm. because what I saw yesterday, I was not happy with. These kids think that it's OK to swear, to curse at the pair of you, to hit you in the face. They have no respect for you. But at what point do two parents not make a decision to go across to a neighbor and apologize for their children's behavior? I've apologized to neighbors before. But yesterday, I did not see it. They played on her apparatus, did not listen to her. And I wish she would have called her that. names. You know, for I don't agree with then, it. Then where I feel did you bad not? that our kids like think they can just charge through other people's yards. Then I why did you not even it. apologize? What? You went into the lady's garden yesterday, Sean. Mm -hmm. You did not even apologize to the neighbor and said, we're really sorry about this. I'm constantly saying I'm sorry, because in this past couple days, uh, Brandon threw fa uh, sand in her face, and I said I'm sorry. You have an extreme situation here, and you both, you both better wake up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bedtime, let's talk about bedtime. It's chaos. Bedtime's ludicrous. There is no bedtime. Well, what time is it? Whenever they we don't. We don't have. Yeah, we don't have a scheduled bedtime. I know they're not getting enough sleep, and I think that's why they're so like crabby in the morning because they don't get to bed on time. I think it's why you're crabby in the morning. I think it's why you've docked out. These kids have got dark marks underneath their eyes. So yeah, they're going to be grouchy, and yeah, they're going to be irritable, and they're not going to focus and concentrate as much. Let's talk about discipline. How do you expect to teach your children the difference between right and wrong? The kids misbehave. You know it's wrong, I, I just yet get you don't sick teach of, them it. I just get sick of hearing myself yell all the time. I get sick of hearing my own voice. You're lazy, the pair of you. Get used to hearing that word, lazy. All you do is give idle threats. And yet what they need from you is a final word. They need you to follow through. I want to start working on this, and I know this will be the hardest two weeks of our life, but it'll be worth it in the end if we follow through, and that's what I'm looking forward to doing. I want to see action, because I can give you what's necessary. We have to use it. But you have to do it. OK, thank you. So many things that mum and dad need to change that I think they need an aid to help them identify and remember them all. We're going to put it right up here. Okay. This is what I am going to show you both. It's the long list of consistent, not so good things we were doing. It was a visual for them to see just exactly how long this list was. It's a visual reminder of where we need to be going, what we need to be doing. Because what we're going to do is, we're going to change that. And when we change it, we're then going to take this off and we're going to put new ones on up here. You're putting your energy into the wrong stuff. So we're now 
going to really start to redirect that energy. So you become more mindful and start to do the things that are very positive up here that are good for your family. The next thing I wanted to give mum and dad was a method to help them stimulate activity with the children, but also to help them feel more motivated to behave better. I've brought in a routine that allows the children to choose the activities that they do in the morning and in the afternoon on the weekends that you do have family time together and then also in the evening when they come home from school. The children will have the choice in taking turns in picking a window and when they open up the window there will be an activity in there that they can do. I gave Sean and Shannon some time to think about the activities that the kids would love, and then they could write that in the little house. Puzzles. Puzzles. Board games. Painting. Painting, yeah. We could bake, do a baking project. Reading a book. Books, that's good. And of course, it was then time to show the house to the kids. Open one up. Hey, what does it say? Books. <gasps> So we to, read, to play with books tonight and read, read them? Read a book tonight. After the parents had shown Bryce and Brandon the activity house, they decided that it would be a good time to go outside and play. Do you guys want to go outside and play? Let's yes. go. We're gonna go. Can you Velcro this for a Of course you can. No, you can do it. Good job. That's what I'm talking about. High five, Bracer. All right, good, good job. job. All right, good job, Bryce. Brandon started to whine about wanting to put a particular pair of shoes on. And when he couldn't get his own way, things started to escalate big time. We can wear skateboarding shoes a different day, but I would like you to put these on for me. Oh, it's up to him. If he doesn't want to put them on, then he doesn't have to play outside. It's up to him. Brandon put on the shoes eventually, but by then, it was all about this temper tantrum he was throwing and his defiant behavior. Brandon. Brandon, this is a warning. If you keep if you keep crying and you keep trying to run out there, then I'm gonna put you in the house on a timeout. Mum had given him a warning and he continued to have a meltdown, which led to a timeout. Brandon, you see, I'm going outside. When you're done crying and you take a four-minute timeout, then you can come outside. Walk away. I need you to stay here. Don't talk. You just put him back. It was the crunch. Mum was going to either follow through and really give Brandon discipline for the first time, or she was going to let it slip. You sit. We've had enough of this faffing around, OK? So he's taking him by the hand, and he's going back over here. Cos we're fed up with this, OK? And we're not having any of this. I thought, you know, timeouts are never going to work for our kids, just cos we've never tried them, like, and we're actually consistent with timeouts. But I knew, yeah, we had to do it just to prove to Jo that we actually were going to take her seriously and try her techniques. Can you tell me you're sorry for throwing a fit out there and not listening to Mom? We've already been through that, Brandon. Oh, oh, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on. Yeah, that, that is the same record he's playing. Yeah, he didn't apologise. Let's go, he can stay there longer. The technique's not over unless it's done properly. And when Brandon decided that he was going to take himself out of timeout, that's when I knew we were in for a long, drawn-out battle. Brandon, please, Brandon, do not hit me. Brandon, OK, you can go back on timeout for hitting Mom. Yep. <laughs> Put it down gently. Are we ready to eat? Bryce? Time out first. No eating, time out. Brandon has never, ever been told no that many times. And so that was really getting to him that I just kept walking him back. And it was really hard for me to do. I think Mum did very well in her effort to keep placing Brandon back into time out, but it had led to Mum needing to get the kids ready for bedtime. <laughs> Open the door, Shannon. Finally, after two and a half hours, Brandon decided 
to stay put. But the persistence did pay off. And this was a matter of Brandon understanding that he needed to listen and do as he was told. That was the longest timeout discipline thing we've ever, ever experienced. And that was hard for me, but I'm really glad that I followed through with it. You were on a timeout because you hit mom and because you weren't listening to me. I need you to tell mom that you're sorry for acting that way. Bryce, Bryce please walk away. Dolly. Okay, can I have hugs and kisses? When Brandon was done with his timeout and he served his four minutes, I was so incredibly happy. I want to eat. Okay. He does need to eat. Sean and Shannon worked really well together and they followed through and stuck with it, which is a real achievement for them. It really is. <laughs> hey, guys, chill it down now because it's, you know, okay. the late evening. Yeah. And get some sleep, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. A good first day today. You Thank took a you. lot in and you follow through. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. Sean and Shannon do know how to discipline the boys now, but I've got some patchwork to do between the pair of them. So Dad does have a challenge to do whilst Mum's at work. Bye, guys. Bye, Sean. Love you. We are going to prepare a meal, okay. a romantic meal, okay. tonight for when Shannon comes home. OK. It's hard for Sean and I to get any alone time. The kids, you know, definitely, they come between us. You guys ready? Come on, Let's Bryce. Let's rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. Bryce, come on. Let's go. So whilst Shannon's at work, Dad has to go around the grocery store and get what he needs and keep three kids in order as well. Do you need to buy a snack? OK. Um, when we get up to the line, you can, OK? If you've told them that they can have something, yeah. then they better be earning it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So you know what? Let you them guys, know, because guys, there's no way you guys, okay, they do you know what, what they normally do. If you're not good in here, then you are not getting anything. OK, a bottle of, we'll get, we'll get her a big bottle. She'll probably need it. All right, OK, ice cream now. Let's face it, when it came to the romantic gestures, I think it would be fair to say that Dad was a little bit rusty. Metropolitan, that's pretty good. OK, play around with it. Go and get some raspberries. OK. Just sprinkle it on top. Have some fun with the food. OK. That would be on the other side of the store, though. That would. But is it worth the effort or not? Um, I think this should be good. I think we got everything. I'm going to go like this to you. Get the raspberries. Come on, let's go. All right, OK, Don't come on. not make the effort for your wife because you're worried about right. dragging the kids okay. around the supermarket. Come on. You've left one. Bryce. Come on, Bryce. Hold on to Brenna. Hold on okay. to Brenna. She's the youngest who keeps running off. March. March. March, 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 March. Follow Dad. OK, here we go. Here we go. OK, let's go. Hold on to Daddy's hand. That was a challenge, but I ended up getting out of there with everything I needed. The problem Shannon and Sean are facing is because these kids don't go to sleep until 10 o'clock, what kind of an evening do Mom and Dad get? All right, so both come over here, because we are going to do bedtime. This is what we do want to do. Take the kids through the paces of pajamas, teeth brushing, potty, reading stories, and so to bed. Tonight, they're going into their own bed straight away. The most stressful part for me is bedtime. All right, guys. It just kind of puts like a wedge between me and Shannon. I mentioned to mom and dad that the best strategy here at this point is divide and conquer. Have mom put Brenna to bed and dad the boys. The parents have to make that choice in creating the transition between day and night. Can I have a kisses? We love mom. I love you guys. Good night. Mum and Dad got the kids off to bed, but when they did so, the kids started to get up and run around, so I gave them a technique to help with this. This is what we're going to do. Brenna, OK, sleep separation technique. The sleep separation technique is to put your child into bed, to stay by the corner of the bedside, and to continuously put your child into bed without talking to them, and then move yourself further and further away until you're outside the bedroom. So are we ready for this? Yeah. Right, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Get into bed. It is bedtime. 
The kids were sneaking up and down, and it really was a case of mom and dad having to stick with these techniques to make them work. Leave this light off, or I am going to take the video game away. Take the video game away. got Brenna off to bed really, really quickly, which was fantastic. And then it left her time to then help Sean with the boys. He's laughing, he's just... She was a major support for Sean when he was putting the boys down. Me and Shannon didn't give up. We just kept doing it and doing it, and eventually they just gave up and fell asleep. Finally, the kids did all settle and go off to sleep which then left them time to enjoy the meal that Sean had prepared. Sean had set up a very nice romantic dinner with candles, flowers. He had the lighting all set. It was pretty. And he had the wine, so that was great. Free's kind of a crowd right now, so uh, enjoy your dinner. Well, I think I overcooked this. It's going to be a little on the crispy side. We've been together almost six years. He's never cooked dinner. It's so important that couples spend time alone. Sean and Shannon have missed so much of that. So let's just check out what's happened here. Both boys are asleep in their bedroom. Brenna's asleep in her bedroom. You guys are chilling in your living room by yourself. Mm -hmm. So what's the odds of me going away for three days and coming back and uh, looking at some good footage? I was nervous. I was like, OK, so now she's not going to be here and help us, like, following through with everything. Are we going to be able to do it? I know. I'm, I'm, I am dead set on getting our kids in straight. They say they're ready for change. They say that they want things to be different. And yes, it needs to desperately be different. Enjoy your evening. The kids are all in bed, and I'll see you in several days. OK. okay? Thank you. Thank you You're welcome. Yeah, See you later. Yeah. Mum and Dad do feel confident that they can really put this all into place. However, it is yet to be seen. So I've left the Kern family for several days. Have they thrown in the towel again or have they continued? I just don't know. I'm about to find out. So who's ready to watch this DVD? Mm-hmm. ready. All right. Go grab the other one. Good girl. All right. Go, Brenna, go. I want to make an X. You got to try to block it so I can't make three across. Here comes the airplane. And open up, open up. Ow. Good job, Brenna. Oof. Oof. But you were certainly involved. Oh, yeah. Huh? Mm-hmm. That's a big difference to when I first arrived. What happened? Well, I just seen that uh, difference in my kids is they were acting better, and I knew that's what I need to start doing is pay more attention to them because I seen a attitude change and you know just the way they got excited and stuff. Just seeing their expressions. And... It can be so rewarding when you are with the kids and you actually enjoy fatherhood, you're actually enjoying it. You're actually enjoying spending time with your kids. Yeah. It's good to see. So we're going to move on to the next clip here. Bryce, you need to get down right now. Bryce, that's a warning. You keep doing it and you're going on timeout. Bryce, you need to get down. You need to get down. No. Stop it, Bryce, or you are going to go on a timeout. Come here. Come here. Bryce, knock it off. We need more focus with discipline. A lot of loose warnings flying around, and there's supposed to be one of them, yet they're in abundance. So really, what does a warning serve then? You've got to follow through. Otherwise, you mess it up for yourselves and for them. Guys, I love you. Good night. <laughs> Next time, you guys keep doing this, no riding your bike tomorrow. 
Listen to me. If you keep doing this, the bikes are gone all day. This is your warning. If you keep doing this, your bike's gone all day. If I see you guys in this hallway, no bikes tomorrow. And I mean it. If during the day you're not consistent and you don't mean what you say, your kids are not going to let up during the evening. They're going to run rings around you. Mm -hmm. Well, because you don't mean what you say. You've got to follow through. You've got to do during the day what you're supposed to do to get the results in the evening. Let's take a look. Brenna, it's bedtime. You crashed out as well. Yeah, not totally. Just kind of caught myself. And I was like, whoa, I need to get up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Was she sleeping? She was sleeping. This sleep separation technique, I just want to say well done. You sat in that bedroom with that door closed. No direction from myself. And you did it and you completed it. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So let's move on to the last clip here. Don't go in there. You don't belong in there. That's not yours, OK? Brenna, you do not go in somebody else's garage. Do you hear me? No, you're going to stay in our yard. This isn't ours. Come on. Hey, Bryce and Brandon, get out of their house. Oh, out in a minute. They'll be out we'll in a minute. play. What I'm still seeing is the kids doing what they want to do in their neighbors' backyards. You know, I understand that you're all out and the kids will play and all the neighbours know each other, but this garage belongs to somebody else. You know, we just cannot walk into other people's space. You know, otherwise it's free for all. All right, so ready for some more work here? Mm-hmm. Yeah? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Boys love to play soccer, so what I want to do is to bring in a relatable discipline technique to help Dad kick this in with the boys. This is time out. This is the place where they come when they misbehave. It's no different to what you've been doing. The rules are still the same. The steps are still the same. You still need to give one warning and follow through. The only difference is, is the kids are going to sit in the penalty spot. I've brought in a yellow card and a red card. But these cards now, you're going to use to aid yourself. The yellow card is for a warning and the red card is for timeout. One warning, one timeout, straight to the timeout spot afterwards. You know, to be honest with you, it's more for Dad's sake than it is for the kids. So let's just hope he uses it. I am really excited to use this technique. I think this is what we needed. The kids were all playing outside, and then Bryce decided to run off, and Dad chased him, which then gave him a good opportunity to put in place the new technique he'd just been taught. So we're not playing Come up here. there. Come Bryce. on. Bryce. Bryce. Reinforce, Sean. Bryce, come here. Sean, Bryce. Yellow card. Huh? Yellow. Oh, yeah. Here, this is right here. You know what this means. This means go inside. This means warning. If I tell you again, you're going to, you're going in. So you gave him a warning. You showed him the yellow. Yeah. So don't worry about showing him the red. Yeah. Oh, it was just a warning, just show him the yellow. Yeah. I do love the fact that this neighbourhood are a community where they are very friendly and know one another, but I still feel that you need to respect each other's property. So I called some of the neighbours over so we could meet in the backyard and talk about this particular subject. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? Hey. There seems to be a lack of respect with regards to people's property without anybody really realising whether that's acceptable or not. So who can really be honest about that? Even when um, my kids aren't outside, Bryce and Brandon will kind of come over. And if I don't know that they're out there, then I can't really keep an eye on them. So I think it might be a good idea to have a little bit more communication. You kind of feel like you're responsible for somebody else's kids if they're in your space. 
So what I wanted to do was to introduce to the neighbourhood some rules. I had a big sign post for them. I hope that they'll read over the rules. I hope they'll all stick together and recognise the important part that they all play in their community. Number one, ask permission before entering others' yards. Number two, kids to be supervised at all times. Three, each parent to respect their neighbour's rules. Number four, respect everyone's property boundaries and one another. Number five, it's really important to maintain the communication. The neighbourhood rules, I think, are going to work really good. It just makes us aware of what each family really wants. I also felt it was important to give the children a visual to remind them to respect their neighbour's space. These flags are going to be placed in your backyard. If the green flag is up, it means that the kids know that it's OK to play on the other person's apparatus. If you see the red flag up high, it means no playing on the apparatus, no coming in. So are you going to do yours? Are you going to place your pole? You have to ask mum and dad. Let's keep it on green, you guys, so everybody can play. I think the boys are going to have a rough time with it, learning their boundaries, but we'll work on that with them. This is going to help. Thanks for coming over to play. They're just going to go home now. I'm going to go home. Hey, hey, no, we want you to stay. When I first walked into this house, I met a very young couple who really found it difficult to listen to the truth. And they made a decision to literally get with the plan and start changing things. So the most important thing to do is to continue. Don't throw the towel in. Don't give up on your kids, because if you give up on your kids, they've got no one. They, they need you. They... I'm closer with my, my kids, and it, it, it makes me feel good. See. This experience has changed my life. Boys, give me a high five. No. You don't want to give me a high five? No? OK. Bye. All right. My dog, Joe. My dog. See you later. Thank okay. you so You're much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Keep up with your hard work. <laughs> Joe changed our family completely. It's amazing, like, the change that we went through in such a short time just to make us wake up and actually do something. She made us a family again. Take care. Thank Keep you. up. Keep yeah, it up. We will. We oh, will. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much you have laid down that has been destructive. You can learn by that and you can change it. Never give up hope. It's never too late.